All right, so we are now recording. So, okay, hi everyone, all our Foster Change members. Uh, we miss you, we miss seeing you in person, but we still wanted to be able to provide you some information that we were going to provide at our last Community Connections meeting. So my name is Allie, I'm a board member of Foster Change and I'm also the Executive Director of Foster Kinship. And with me today, I have Lori Curridan, who is the president of the CASA Foundation and also has been a CASA volunteer for 20 years, which is amazing. So thank you, Lori. Um, we were you. just chatting before we started recording about being CASA volunteers. So one thing that if you are no longer fostering and you want to still give back, you should definitely think about being a CASA volunteer. It is awesome. I went through the training. I highly recommend it for any of you who are interested. But we're not here to talk about that today. We're here to talk about the CASA Foundation and some of the um, requests that foster parents and others who are caring for kids might be able to um, ask the CASA Foundation to help with our kids. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Lori, and you're gonna explain how we do this. Thank you so much and welcome everyone. I just, it, I'm so thrilled to be here and I'm so thrilled to participate in this video presentation. I wish I could be there in the room with you guys all in person. Um, I would thank you, first of all, for being caregivers. I, like Ali said, as a CASA volunteer of more than 20 years, I've met amazing, committed individuals who do far more than I've ever done for the kids in my caseload. And I just, I cannot thank you enough for your efforts. On behalf of those kids, I, I have seen them blossom in your homes and bloom and, and change their, I've seen you change so many of their lives for the better, and I just can't thank you enough. Really what we do is just to support what you do and to make your jobs just a little bit easier. As Ali mentioned, my name is Lori Curridan. I have been a CASA volunteer for a long, long time. I have loved working with foster children in this community and also loved participating in the CASA Foundation. Many of you may be familiar with our role in the community and to support foster kids. Some of you may not. The CASA Foundation, amazingly, has been around for almost 40 years almost as long as the CASA program. Our mission is to assist and support kids in care in our community here in Clark County. So, and we do that in a number of ways. First, we do support the CASAs, the CASA volunteers that you may or may not have with your kids on your teams. We also plan super fun events, which you may have participated in, our, our Angel Tree, our Back to School, our Grad Bash. We have a lot of fun events throughout the year. We hope you all come and benefit from those events. They're designed to be a fun break and a fun, uh, fun little celebration for your kids of some important milestones in their lives. Um, at, at challenging times, right, when school starts and when it's the holidays, we want to lighten your burden a little bit. So we love those events. But the thing that I really want to spotlight today, and my favorite part of what we do at the foundation, and some of you may know me from this program, are, are special needs. Um, we meet unmet needs for kids in foster care. Some of you may know me from this position. I was the um, special needs committee chair for many years for the foundation. So many of you I've worked with as you made re requests for your kids, I've called you back and I've said, how can we get this great item or this great activity or this, or this plane ticket or this tutoring? How can we facilitate this for kids in your homes? And that is what I wanted to talk about today. And that is what we're very, very excited to continue to do in the community despite, I know this coronavirus craziness. We in the past have gotten almost 70 requests a month for kids for great things that they needed. Things like braces or, or tutoring or a plane ticket to grandma out of state or, or hockey lessons or princess ballerina camp, which is one of my personal favorites. Amazing. Um, I know, right, right? I have learned that there are a lot of really great activities in this town. Um, but it's slowed, of course it's slowed way, way down, but we know um, that when things start to open up, you and your kids are all be, gonna be going crazy. So we anticipate that as soon as you find activities that are gonna start rolling for kids and you identify places they may wanna go this summer and you see what their educational needs are for tutoring, we anticipate, anticipate that a deluge of requests and we are prepared for that and excited for that. So the, here's what we cover at the foundation. And then I'll go over with you really quickly and Allie will have a handout that she can show you that will explain also what we cover and how you can apply. There's our guideline sheet for 2020. 
The first thing we cover, of course, are educational enrichment programs. We are so committed to these kids getting caught up. There's been years of academic um, neglect for most of these kids in, the, in their lives and lots and lots of, of time lost as they've moved from schools to schools. So we have found that tutoring at the tutoring club has been really beneficial. If the kids are able to get there consistently um, in catching them up so that they can accomplish grade level work. There are five tutoring club locations. We are offering tutoring just through the tutoring club. We've tried to expand it and it's just been too hard to manage because we have so many kids in care. And so unfortunately, the requirements for that is, is consistent transportation. So hopefully that won't be an impediment if your child needs tutoring. Um, we also uh, do academic camps, UNLV, does some really, really, really fun. They have a really great reading camp in the summer. They do some great academic camps. There are some STEM camps in this, in this town. So look at academic resources for your kids. Look at areas they're interested in and areas where they may have gaps and see what we can help you with in terms of, of education and academics. Um, number two, we cover lots and lots of sports. We're always paying, we're paying for kids to play basketball, baseball, hockey, soccer, what you name it, I think we've covered it. We'd love to see kids engaged. And I know your kids are gonna be antsy like crazy and ready to play something. So hopefully this summer, sports, sports or sports camps will be available. If it's a seasonal sport like football, we'll pay the cost of registration and the cost of the season. If it's a monthly sport like karate, we will pay for three months plus the registration fee. With the understanding that if that's an ongoing expense that the kid really loves, you could reapply for funds. And if we have funds available, we might pay for some additional months, or you might be able to find money in your budget for that. But it gives you a chance to see if they love it and if it's a good fit for your family. We will also cover school sports fees that aren't covered by the school. They, they have assured us, CCSD has assured us that our foster kids should not be, should not be held accountable for fees or held up from any activity or any sport because of a fee. They should be getting fee waivers. But in case that is not forthcoming, we can cover those, those, uh, those costs. We will pay for group music lessons, um, instrument rental. Individual lessons aren't covered because they're ridiculously expensive and we just don't have the funds for that. Travel is a fun thing we do for kids in the summer, spring break, over the holidays. Most of our kids in care have someone special out of state. They may have a grandparent or an adopted sibling or a favorite aunt or just someone that would spend a week with them for the summer and give them a chance to have a little bit of a break in you, <laughs> for you to have a little bit of a break. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's great for them because it gives them a little bit of a permanent anchor. The reality for our kids is they, they may not all have anchors, you know, forever. They may turn 18, they may move on and and they may not have an anchor in our home for whatever reason. But if we can keep that, their little anchors that pre-existed in their life from a grandparent, a significant adult in their life who cares about them, that, that gives them a launching pad, again, for, for independent living that seems to be very beneficial. So we will pay for travel for kids twice a year um, out of state. And those requests can be twice a year just because we wanna cover as many kids as we can. Um, we also cover CASA travel to visit. If, if our kids get placed in residential treatment as a CASA volunteer, I've traveled often to visit my kids out of state and the foundation will reimburse for those. Those fees are if you, you know what, if you wanted to travel to visit your kids in residential treatment, we would certainly consider that request as well. Um, activities, we pay for lots and lots of fun activities. Weekly camps like this summer, the YMCA Boys and Girls Club, all of those organizations, leisure centers will have weekly camps that they'll offer. We'll pay for, we don't pay for daycare. It's just too expensive. And we know there's other EOB funds and other ways you can access funding for that. But we will pay for activities if the distinction makes sense. Yeah, so we will, yeah does that make sense? It does. Um, not daycare, but not camps like daycares, like for the whole summer. But we will pay for two weeks. So find something fun near you um, and make sure we get your kids enrolled for two weeks. We will cover, the, again, this back to the school expenses. If it's not covered by the school, again, we would ask you to really exhaust that possibility because they, they have committed to doing that to us. But, you know, again, that's more or less successful. Um, but if there's like a band trip or 
okay, so we didn't pay for Europe this year because that was ridiculous. But if there are band trips within the United States or great, great trips, we pay, let's see, what were some great, we paid for uh, one foster kid to go to journalism camp in New York because she was a journalism kid at high school. I mean, we've paid for some really, really fun tech camps. We just paid a, a portion of a kid to go to a tech camp out of state because he was a, he's an engineering kid that loves that kind of stuff. So there are some great activities that we would like to make sure kids get to. We'll cover scout fees if your kids are involved in scout troops or dance classes or gymnastics activities like that. Again, if it's a month to month thing, we'll pay for three months plus the registration fee with the idea that we, you may be able to reapply or if it's, if it's a manageable cost, we hope that could just be taken care of as part of your budget. Mm -hmm. Medical, dental, we have covered glasses. Medicaid only pays for one pair of glasses per year. Every once in a while, one of our kids breaks. Okay, breaks, loses, something, another. An, okay, seriously, right? Let's be honest. <laughs> a pair of glasses, right? So we've paid for glasses before if Medicaid won't cover. We also have Medicaid. Um, we're very excited to partner with the UNLV orthodontic program. And um, they'll take some of our kids for braces. You have to be able to get them to UNLV's campus, their dental college campus, which is on Charleston and 15. And they will cover the cost of braces if Medicaid has denied. So we've, that has been really fun program to see those kids smile again. You know, with Mouse, yeah. so proud to get their smile back. So that's a fun thing that we're covering. So if your kid's been denied for braces, please make that request. I, we're still processing those. I, as far as I know, the dental program has not shut that down. Okay. And, and number seven, when in doubt, make a request. You know, if, if it's not explicitly on this list, but you say, like, for example, we just got a request for little orthopedic shoes because Medicaid covered the braces for, for a child that needed braces hip braces, but didn't cover the shoes that went over the brace. And the child would need those, of course, to be able to walk and, you know, whatever. I mean, obviously. So it never hurts to contact us or just make a request and we'll contact you. Um, did you have any questions about that part, Allie, before I switch over to how to apply? Um, first of all, this is amazing. So thank you for doing this. Um, and I'll leave, I, some of my questions are about who qualifies, so I'll let you get to that. But when you were talking about tutoring, you said consistent transportation. So that would just be me as the foster parent needing to make sure that I was able to get the child to tutoring club um, in order to qualify for that. Okay, right. and then with the academic delays, um, a lot of the kids that I know or that even live in my home have something like, you know, additional needs, like they might have FASD or autism or just some sensory issues that make it just difficult to get stuff done at home. Is that an appropriate way to get support for their um, academics or is that not, I mean, do they have to have an IEP? Tell me more about that. You know what, that's a good question. Obviously, we would encourage the caregiver to explore all of the resources that would be available for a special needs child, right? So in addition to tutoring for the academic side and the content side, we would of course support the parent in you know, going to the school and making sure that child has an IEP or a 504 accommodation. I'm also an educational surrogate. So through legal aid of Southern Nevada, you absolutely, really honestly, I have never worked with a foster child in 20 years who didn't qualify. So yeah. some form of academic support at the school level through uh, some disability. There's lots of disability designations that they can use to determine aid, right? To get that IEP or that 504. But it would be silly to just go to tutoring, right? When, and just be, have your kid be super delayed and be in regular ed classes, not be getting the special ed support available at the school. So we absolutely would encourage every foster parent caregiver to get whatever supports available at their school site. And for most of our kids, that's a lot. Right. Speech therapy, occupational therapy, you know, academic support, resource classes. And then we will provide tutoring. And as long as they make progress, we will stay with them in tutoring for a significant period of time. The problem lies periodically, it will, there will be a severe learning disability that tutoring can't address that, that can be addressed more effectively in a resource setting. 
So if, for example, we have a, a child that we've paid for tutoring for four months and it's been $2,500 and, and there's no progress, we may say, you know, we're so sorry, but for this particular child in this case, tutoring is probably not going to make much of a difference. So, you know, we will then say, please let us know how we can support you in making those special education requests at your school site. Right. Um, most kids benefit from tutoring, but if their behaviors are such that they can't, it's a small group, it's three child to one tutor. So if, if their behaviors are so challenging that they can't function and it makes it impossible for them and the other students to learn, or if they can't make progress in that environment, then, they, then they're not a good fit for that program. That makes sense. Okay, that helps. Um, and then just a little bit more on the travel. It says here on your sheet that DFS will purchase the ticket. Um, yes. So if, if I'm as a foster parent needing to go maybe visit my child in residential treatment or wanting to send them to grandma, can I do that? Or do I have to go through my caseworker? You know what? You would go through your caseworker, right? right? You could, re or we would go through your caseworker. The great thing about DFS, and I'm surprised that not more people know this, they also pay for travel for kids to maintain these relationships, right? Or every other month they pay for somebody to travel to visit kids in residential treatment. So if it's the child traveling to visit a, a relative or a significant adult, they will pay for the ticket and then we will reimburse them for half the cost. So we partner with DFS. So ultimately your worker is involved in that process because your worker makes the request from fiscal to buy the ticket and then they send us the invoice. So okay. you, you, but you can make the request. We will reach out to the worker and go through the process as well. Or you can just communicate with your worker and say, grandma is willing, you know, Johnny really wants to visit. There's a sibling placed with auntie in Louisiana. Um, let's figure out how to make this work. And we partner with DFS and take care of it. But either, either, either the foster parent or the worker can make the request for funds. Perfect. I love that. Okay. Thank you so much. I think those were my questions so far. Now I'm just dying to know the process. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's super easy. Okay. Go to the website, www.casafoundationlv.org. Select special needs request. You have to fill in. It gives you prompts. It's quite a bit of information, obviously, for us to process the request. We verify wardship and we, and we verify proof of cost. So if it's tutoring, you can put a dollar in, in there's, a, there's a box where you, uh, you say what the cost of the activity is. If it's tutoring, you put a dollar. If it's travel, you put you know, $300, whatever. But if it's an activity that would require proof of cost like a sport or like a school trip or like, um, or like a scout fee or gymnastics, monthly gymnastics, we require you to scan and attach a documentation that, that shows proof of cost. We don't send checks to, you know, Lola Brooks. We, do you know what I mean? We send checks to Jim, Jim Cats. We send checks to, you know, um, National Junior Basketball. Um, we yeah. really, as a nonprofit, we're very, very careful with our funds. And so we need that proof of cost piece to attach for our documentation purposes. So, okay. so that's, that's always an important piece. And we make a lot of phone calls back to the requester and say, hey, you know, we see that you requested Boys and Girls Club two weeks. We need a flyer, something, something that shows us what the cost is. And you then send us the information about who to make the checkout to and where to send it. And a lot of times the proof of cost has that information as well. So it's kind of easy to make sure we've got it correct. Um, if it's for tutoring or travel, we don't need that. We just need to know if it's for tutoring, which tutoring club location is closest to you. Okay. So we make sure we send the request to that location to set up some time. Um, give us enough time to process the request. Unfortunately, every once in a while we get a request where the trip has to be paid for tomorrow or the kid can't go. Or, you know, the basketball fees were due, you know, last week and now, or, and they'll dis, dis enroll them. We, we typically can't turn it around that fast, right? We have to verify wardship. We have to verify proof of cost. So oftentimes that takes a minute. We have to wait for the social worker to call us back to make sure they support the request and are aware that it's been made. And then we have to request a check and send the check out from the treasurer. So it's usually like a seven business day process. So, so try, if it's an emergency and it was nobody's fault, we sometimes will go outside that guideline every once in a while to just 
we really try. But um, typically that's how much time we need for the check to go out. Okay. Um, we, we do not reimburse unless it's unusual. Every once in a while we have a foster parent who will contact us and say, oh, I paid for football for my kid. It was, you know, $220. Could you send me a check? Because I know you paid for football. But they didn't make the request in advance. And that's just not manageable from our end. You know, we can't just get a list of all the stuff that got paid for with a like pay for this. It has to be approved in advance, right? We, we generally want to send the check to the organization. That's easier as a nonprofit for bookkeeping, right? Of course. And for accountability purposes. Every once in a while, if the request is made and they don't take a check, um, we will say, okay, this is approved for reimbursement. You provide us proof but the request has to be made and approved in advance. You can't just say, hey, I paid for this. Now will you pay, now will you reimburse me? You have to make the request and we say, okay, we can't figure out a way to send this check for whatever reason. You can be reimbursed and then we will. Does that make sense? It does, yes. It's perspective that way. Um, let's see, we try, we, we try to only do one request per child every two months just because of the number of kids we have in care. So for example, you couldn't say, I want my kid to do gymnastics this month and football next month. Could you pay, you know, $300 for gymnastics and $300 for football, you know, September, you'd have to wait. And Got it's it. just because, you know, we look at that number one on, you know, how can we be responsible stewards given the number of children we have in care? And number two, most of us as parents, we, we couldn't afford to have our kid in two activities at the same time anyway. You know, it's kind of a reality check for me as a, as a parent of four kids, right, myself, yes. and an unpaid volunteer, I'm like, well, you know what? So, so if you have two things your foster kid wants to do, prioritize, you know, well, right at the same time. Normalcy, Lori. <laughs> ask, ask for the more expensive one from the right. foundation. Yeah, okay. yeah, and then wait a couple months, and that is separate from tutoring and travel. We would pay for a travel request, a soccer request. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. That is a separate thing. It's the activities that we need to spread out we want ideally to never have to say no. We want to be able, as long as we can verify cost and establish that the child is a ward, we want to be able to cover wherever we can to support kids in care and foster and you know caregivers. So we want to spread our funds out as much as we can, considering the fact that we have 3,000 kids in care and, and we're limited to whatever is donated, right? So our funding fluctuates a little bit. Our ability to cover fluctuates. So we try to be good stewards of the money that we receive. Um, and finally, under that, how to apply, if a child is 14 or over, they're eligible for Chafee, federal Chafee funds. We ask, and if those are use it or lose it funds, if you don't use them up, they go away. Um, so we ask the kids, if it's Chafee eligible, the, the, the expense, like yearbooks, like employment stuff, like job clothing, we ask if it's a Chafee eligible expense and the child gets those, those dollars, that they use those funds first and then apply to the foundation when those have been exhausted. Understood. And finally, the last but not least, our new special needs committee chair, Karen Regan, is also a longtime foster, uh, a CASA volunteer. She's amazing. So the requests go to her and there, there's her number right there. There's her cell number. If you have any other specific questions, please reach out to Karen. So I know that we will. When people watch this, they might have questions about the kids in their home and the activities. So it's okay for them to go ahead and call Karen now sure. Um, sure. Even during this. Okay. Perfect. Absolutely. Absolutely. She's terrific. And it, and it saves us time on the back end. Honestly, we, I would rather have a call from a foster parent saying, do you cover this? Then have them go through the effort of making, if it's not on the sheet, so it's unclear, then them having to make the request and having me having to call and say, I'm so sorry. You wasted your time. So please right. feel free to give Karen a call. I'll warn her. <laughs> yeah, get, warn her, right? Exactly. Okay, this is awesome. Um, so I heard you say several times that one of the requirements is that the child is currently in custody, in foster care. They have to have that yes. placement letter. So if I've just adopted and I want to send my kid to karate, you know, I'm going to find a different way to do that. Is that correct? Yeah, if the child's being, a, if the child's been adopted, if the child is still in care and being in the process of being adopted, we will cover their activity costs until the adoption is finalized. Perfect. And I know that's a very lengthy process. Yes, um, if the is. child, we also, if a child has come into custody and not been adjudicated, 
and there's something that is needed on an emergency basis, we also, as long as the child's come into custody, even though they're not declared wards yet, because they haven't been adjudicated, we will also, as long as they're in custody, we will also support those kids okay. for any, any emergency basis, any of their needs. Um, but, but by and large, the majority of requests, 99% of the requests come from kids that are just in you know, foster care or foster care pending adoption. Okay, and so, and then a foster parent can make the request or a CASA volunteer can make the request. Um, yeah, that's a and, good question. And the caseworker. Right, any responsible adult in the child's life who has that information available that we need on our website to make the request. It could be a caregiver, it could be, you know, kinship care, it could be a grandparent, it could be a social worker, it could be the CAP attorney. We get requests from CAP attorneys, could be the CASA volunteer. We get requests from lots of people in those kids' lives. And it doesn't matter which of those adults makes the request. We review them the exact same. We process those in the same way. I love this. Um, anything that I would need if I was making a request before I go to casafoundationlv.org that I'd want to have handy to complete the application? Just really the proof of cost. Okay. Just if it's, a specific, if it's an item like an activity, like a camp, like a sport, um, that has a monthly amount or a seasonal amount or a one-time fee. We just need that documentation. So before you make the request, make sure you have your documentation, you scan it and you attach it. I love it. Okay, thank you so much, Lori, for this information. We will prepare yes. Karen for the call. Yes, if I she will. Has. I'll but warn her. Um, we're so excited to start planning ahead for the things that we can do with our families as this lifts and so Thank you to the CASA Foundation for everything you do for kids in care and for all of us who support kids. We're just so appreciative of your time today. Thank you so much. Yes, you bet. Good luck to all of you. Okay, thank you, Lori. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.